Hey guys, welcome to US a Lifestyle, where you live your life differently. I'm your host, Ayasha Robertson, and on today's episode, we're going to be talking about your mental health. So it's all about mental health and understanding when you need your mental health check-in. So as a crisis clinician, as a psychiatric screener in New Jersey, I've been working in the mental health field for two decades up just about. So I've worked in different parts of mental health from day programs to being a foster care case manager uh, to also working as a crisis clinician. So I've done different elements of mental health and case management, whether it's social, social work related to children and foster care settings, or I've worked with adults and day programs, which are more group settings. And then of course I worked as a crisis. I'm currently been working as a crisis clinician. So it's all about your mental health and your mental wellness. When do you need to start really checking on your mental health? So I always tell people that you may need to do a mental health check-in once a week with yourself. Make sure you are able to check in with yourself and make sure if you're not able to really check in on your mental health and kind of judge it yourself, like if you're mentally not there, you may need a friend. So I always tell people you should have mentors that are with you that's going to help guide you. Now, I know a lot of people have therapists, which is great, and they have psychiatrists, that are, which is great as well, but they may not be able to help you through your mentor. I believe just like in the addiction arena, when you talk about drugs and alcohol, they have sponsors. You sometimes need someone that's a mentor for you when it comes to your mental health. Now, that person could be a trained clinician. That person can be a person who actually has maybe can be a support system for you as well and had their own mental health issues, but they're more in control and they can help you and guide you through your mental health too. So there can be two people or maybe just that one person that can help you when you're dealing with some of your own mental health issues that goes on with inside your own life, especially if you're a person who works every day or someone that has your own children and family and you don't really get to check in on yourself. So one of the things I've talked about on my other show, Sun Vibes, is about really having self-care days. So you have to really have self, self-care self days with you and you can't dedicate a day to yourself, at least a dedicate a half of the day or about three or four hours of the day just to yourself, whether you are reading a book whether you just need to throw on some Abraham Hicks, whether you need to just rest, <laughs> just good old sleepy, that kind of can do the trick to kind of reboot you. It's like our computers. Our computers need to be rebooted and reset. Our bodies need to, our mentally, our minds need to be rebooted and reset. And sometimes in cases of when we're stressed out about things within inside our own life, it can... Some it most of the time will help us if we just take a nap and relax. And a lot of times we're we are feeling may not be feeling a hundred percent percent better, but we're feeling much better than we were feeling prior to us having that little mental health crisis. So there's different types of crises. So when I think of a crisis being a crisis clinician, because I work in a hospital setting where people come to us and they want to hurt themselves or other people, they're psychotic, they're hearing voices, they're paranoid, they think after them, they're delusional, they think they're someone else that really isn't, or they think the other person is someone else that really isn't, or they're not functioning, they can't take care of themselves, haven't bathed, haven't washed, haven't eaten, haven't slept. So that is a crisis as well, but other people go through other crises that may not be on that level of an extreme crisis where you need to go seek uh, emergency help from like a trained clinician that works in the emergency room or you need to call 911. However, there's different crises that people go through that they may not need, to need emergency services and they may not have access to a therapist or a psychiatrist, maybe because their therapist and psychiatrist have traditional day hours and they don't offer like after hour services for them to reach out to uh, their therapist or psychiatrist or clinical uh, or even holistic person that they're look they're um, going to. So if you're in a situation where you're feeling like emotional, you're feeling emotional drain, you have these relationship issues with your parents or you're not getting along with your siblings or you're not getting along with your friends and you've been friends for the past 10 years or you grew up with them in high school and you went to college together or you're just having some issues, you're knocking heads with, you know, your man or your woman because 
y'all just not seeing eye to eye on this 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 situation and it's kind of it's getting you to a point where you can't get past this point that could be also a crisis as well it's not a, it's not the extreme thing and not saying that people don't come into the emergency room for that because some people do it gets to the point where they get so stressed out they come into the emergency room. You can have a even a financial crisis, like maybe losing your house or you're losing your car or you have a lot of debt or you're being um, cited by the IRS. So many different things. So these are other crises as well that sometimes people just need somebody to talk to or you need some things to help you during that time. And that's when you can do your little check-in do your mental checking on, on yourself and just kind of have these conversations with yourself. You can also write down how you're feeling to kind of release some of that energy as well. Again, I believe the mentor, I will always suggest a mental health mentor. And that may be someone that you may need to have, pay for <laughs> someone to kind of be someone that you can kind of call and help you through those crises that you have. And that could be a, a mentor, a mental health mentor, again, could be someone that is a trained clinician that actually have that experience, or it can be someone like um, like a peer support person that also has mental health, has, has a history of mental, il mental illness as well, mental health, and they're stabilized enough, but they're able to help you. So I know in the crisis field, we have people that are called peer support. So these are people who are people who have the same issues as some of the patients that come into the hospital when they're in crisis, and they're able to kind of help the patient out feeling supportive and that someone that's there that knows what they're going through versus a clinician who may not have that mental health experience, the peer support person is. And that sometimes that person is able to actually engage with the patient and help them to understand that they're not the only person going through. So you can have that mental health peer or that mental health peer support person that can help you through your mental health issues. So there you have it. You have to do your mental health check-in. It is going to be the springtime soon. And I want you for this 2023 to make sure you're mentally checking in with yourself each and every week. So again, you can do so, so many things to mentally check in with yourself. That's going to help you grounded, help you feel good about yourself and of course, so you don't go into any crises. So again, make sure you take a self-help help day. Make sure you do like on your self-help day, you do a mental health check-in. The self-help day can be a self-care day as well. And you can do your mental health check-in. So read a book, relax, do something for yourself that can help you ease up the tension of what you're feeling like. Or you can call your, your support person that helps you through your mental health issues. And you, of course, if you're going through an issue on that day and you have a mental health support person, that person usually can, you can call that person a little bit more frequently than someone who isn't um, uh, someone that's your therapist or your psychiatrist because they may have certain hours that's just dedicated Monday through Friday from a certain time frame. However, a mental health support person similar to someone that you may have an addiction as a sponsor, may or may not charge you money, may may end up charging you a fee for them to talk with you during those crises, which if it's a trained clinician or someone that's trained in the field, they should as well. Because <laughs> that's just the part of the nature of that experience, um, mental health uh, clinician support system and mentor for you. For more information about mental health or you feeling like you're suicidal, make sure you dial 988 for the National Suicide Hotline, or you can call your local police and be taken to the closest emergency room for a mental health evaluation. And for more information about NAMI and any other types of support groups for families and friends of loved ones who suffer from mental health, or mental illness, you can always go to NAMI's website, which is listed on the bottom of this video. And if you have any information or you want more information about USL Lifestyle, you always email me, ayasha at urbansocialitesnj.com. Take care of yourself, guys. Have a good day. And thank you for living your life differently. See you soon.